quite awesome. <laughs> how are y'all doing today? Yeah. Oh, good. Nice. And how this guy like going? <laughs> All right, damn, this lady sounds like my mom when she's drunk. <laughs> oh, shit, that is my mom. That's fucking embarrassing. Any uh, married couples here today? Any married couples? We got a few? Few in the back? Nice, nice. Okay, cool. I got you. Put your hand down. <laughs> so, uh, my wife and I, we're actually happy married for three years now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I remember when I let my dad know that I'm about to get married. I said, hey, Dad, you know, congratulations, you're about to become a father-in-law. He said, oh, shit, Sean. He was always worried. I said, why? He goes, cuz, man, this whole time I thought you was gay. <laughs> So it messed me up, a couple days went by, I kept thinking about it, and uh, I hit him up. I gave him a call, I said, hey dad, I was like, were you really relieved to find out that I wasn't gay? He goes, of course, man, of course. He goes, the way things turned out between you and your, my mom, uh, your mom and, and myself, we got a divorce, she was raising you, she was practically raising you, so I thought you might grow up soft and gay. So I tried everything in my ability to prevent that. I don't know if you remember, Sean, you remember when you was little, like, to point out as many breast assists as I can to you? I used to be like, hey, Sean, check out them cones. Oh, she got some small cones. You don't want thick cones. Ooh, she got some big cones. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I actually went home that evening to my, to my wife, and she was like, how did it go? I said, you know what? It's kind of weird. I let her know my dad's response. And uh, she was like, whoa, that's, that's kind of strange. I go, yeah, she wanted to know how my upbringing was. So I told her one particular story. And my dad is a military man. So there's one thing that military men don't know how to do and is cook. When he, he used to make me sandwiches for school, he only qualified as a sandwich because it's literally two pieces of bread with random shit inside. <laughs> and what I mean by that is he'll tell two breads, instead of putting mayonnaise on it, he'll put butter. And your healthy portion of the sandwich, you know, like with like the lettuce and tomatoes, he will use that store-bought pre-mixed salads, like at the grocery store, like the one that's like on the verge of expiring. That's what he used to use for my healthy portion of my sandwich. And then for the protein part of it, it was any random meat that he would find in the fridge. I'm talking about curry from the night before. <laughs> he would warm that shit up, throw on my sandwich, send me off to school. And you know, kids in school, they try to trade, right? They trade snacks and fruit rollers and stuff like that. They were like, hey, Sean, what you got today? I was like, man, I got my dad's sandwich. They were like, hell no! They were like, man, that's why I ate that gave me the shit. So after telling that story to my wife, my wife said, damn, I didn't know your dad picked you like a refugee. I was like, yeah, yeah. She goes, damn. She goes, all right. So I'll tell you what, for your birthday, we'll go out and we'll have a nice dinner. I said, all right, cool. My birthday comes around, and she said, hey, my parents and I are gonna take you out to this nice, elegant restaurant. I said, okay, this is perfect. I get to bomb my, my in-laws as well as my wife, you know? So we go to this nice restaurant, and it's like right on the water. There's like yachts, right? It's beautiful. So we go in, and I figure, I was like, man, we're gonna have a good time, you know? So uh, so we go in, and the hostess is like, how many in your apartment? And my wife says, there's four adults. And I, I go, uh, and can you grab a children's menu with crayon, please? So my wife and my father-in-law look at me, they shake their heads, they're already embarrassed. So she grabs everything. As we're walking to our table, my wife knocks on my shoulder. She goes, Sean. I go, what's up? She goes, what was that all about? And I was like, well, I like to doodle while we wait for our food. She goes, Sean, this ain't fucking Denny's. <laughs> She goes, we had an elegant restaurant, get your shit together. I said, God damn, God damn. So we sit down at the table, we sit down. And the, the hostess gives us these really big menus, like leather bound, super huge. I can't see nothing in front of me, right? This is why I found out my wife is a hypocrite. Because at that time, at that time, I started hearing giggling, laughter, scratching sounds. I lowered my menu, and my father-in-law and my wife are playing tic-tac-toe on that same damn kiss movie this bitch got me about. Oh, man. So the waitress comes. She goes, uh, you ready to order? My father-in-law says, you know what, Sean, it's your birthday. You can have the honors by ordering first. I said, oh, man, I'm so excited, right? So uh, she goes, what would you like? And remind you, I grew up with the military dad. The only restaurant I've ever been to 
It was like McDonald's where you order off a menu with a number on it, right? So I look at the waitress and I go, you know what, I'm ready. She goes, what would you like? I said, I'd like order number 34. <laughs> she was like, what? And I said, I know, you got so many 34s on this thing. I don't know how you don't know which one's mine, so I want the number 34 with chicken on it. I said that shit with confidence. <laughs> my wife looks over, she goes, what are you looking at? She looks over, she goes, Sean, I go, what? She goes, that's the price. I said, $34 for some food? <laughs> Holy shit. All right, let me get number 12 then. <laughs> so, uh, so on the right back, my wife is super embarrassed. She was like, God damn, Sean, you need to get out more. I said, yeah, I agree with that. So uh, she was like, for our anniversary, this is what we're gonna do. She's like, we're gonna book a nice stay at a nice hotel. I said, all right, cool. So uh, she ends up booking a spot in Napa. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Napa, but it's wine country. You know, there's grapes everywhere. There's white people everywhere. She's clapping for the white people, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, we pull up, right? We pull up to Napa, and it's nice. It's in the heart of, of downtown Napa, this hotel. It's called the Andaz. I don't know if you guys ever heard about it, but it's a really high-end hotel in downtown Napa. And it reminds you, we were with the military dad. So therefore, I ain't never stayed at a hotel before. If anything, I stayed at a motel, like a Motel 6. You know where you walk in, the TV only plays Spanish channels? You got like a bed on the side that had like cigarette burns on it? Pretty much a perfect setting for to catch a predator. That's what my past experience was. So my wife gives me a little pep talk in the car. She goes, hey Sean, you know you ain't never been to a hotel before, I just wanna give you a heads up. At the hotel room, there's gonna be a fridge there with drinks and stuff in it. There's gonna be a basket there with snacks in. Nothing's complimentary. I said, all right, cool, nothing complimentary. So we walk into the lobby. It's a beautiful lobby. There's like a big old bar, there's chandeliers, there's like a fireplace. Those same white people that she was applauding right there was reading books in front of it. They were seen that shit live before, it was awesome. So this lady approaches us though, right? She has a tray, it's full of glass, or tons of glasses, and it's full of champagne. Right, so she walks up, she goes, thank you for staying at the Andaz today, for checking in. You get a complimentary champagne. I'm not gonna lie, at the time, I didn't know what complimentary meant. To be honest with you, that just sounded expensive. <laughs> so I was like, you know, we're gonna hold off on that complimentary champagne. <laughs> and my wife tugs me on the shoulder. She was like, Sean, I said, hey, I was like, I got this, I got this. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you can see her now, but this bitch is over here trying to make us buy this compliment of champagne. I ain't gonna let that shit fly. Matter of fact, babe, I'm gonna try to get something for free. So I turn back to the lady, I say, hey, you know what, we're gonna pass on that, and if you are some of that cucumber water, I know that's just for free. Because, you know, my wife and I, we're here on, the, on our anniversary, and we're on a tight budget, and I want to take her out to a nice dinner. And my wife taps me on the show, she goes, Sean, complimentary means free. I said, oh shit, we get free champagne? This is dope. So I grabbed four for myself, <laughs> went up to the room, started drinking my compliment champagne. It came around dinner time, and my wife said, uh, hey, let's go downstairs to the restaurant and have some dinner. I said, all right, cool. So we go downstairs, it's nice, it's beautiful. It's like a nice dim setting just like this, right? There's a grand piano. And there's a guy playing the piano, I ain't never seen that before either. So we sit down at our table, right? We sit down, and the waiter comes up. He says, uh, hey, thank you for dining at the Andaz today. Is there something I could start you off to drink? Possibly a bottle for your table. I said, you know what, my man? We'll like to order a bottle. Matter of fact, we'll like to order a bottle of your finest complimentary champagne. <laughs> hey, man, that's my time, y'all. Get up for Tommy T's.